outside of what you're doing at Script Health, I mean, what are some of the more innovative or exciting companies that you see in the healthcare space? Sure, that's a great question. So I'm pretty obsessed with pharmacies uh, right now, <laughs> um, but I think that you know it's really cool to see how quickly digital health has been adopted. Um, I've been able to talk to some leaders in the healthcare space. You know, uh, one in particular um, is one of one of my mentors. He's at an elite, you know, like an elite university hospital. He's a physician there, and he was telling me, um, and this may have changed because this was maybe about nine months ago, but he was telling me that they were going to make a good um, a good run at really trying to um, deploy digital health options first at the hospital. Like they were looking at a model where they might do 60% of care that's virtual, and then the other 40% is, is in person, and they kind of do triages. They just, they want to kind of experiment that. So I think that not in particular in the, in the digital health space, they just like the adoption, but a lot of companies are innovating in there. Um, and, and I like to see that. And I see some other pharmacy companies that are stepping up. Um, some that come to mind are Aspen RX and um, Aspen RX is a good company. They're utilizing pharmacists to kind of fill gaps in, in care uh, remotely, kind of just be the doctor's backup and try to like get more information for the physician so that they can make better decisions and keep patients healthier. Um, so I, I think those are some pretty innovative models that are that are emerging. So I, I think a lot of these companies have also seen more adoption as as the pandemic hit because people didn't want to leave their home to access care. Yep, that's that's very true. And the same. I think you've also seen a lot of innovation with, uh, for example, care for uh, people with learning difficulties getting diagnosed online and, and using telehealth in the areas where previously you had to find a specialist. If you think it's already... You know, most people have access to a pharmacist, but imagine parents raising a child with autism uh, where they don't have access to any developmental specialists within miles of, of where they live. Yeah. And, and you know, Greg, to, to that point, I would like to add that, you know, healthcare has been in the dinosaur ages forever, right? And COVID pushed us into the new age. You know, laws and policies have really stifled innovation. And now, you know, laws that were made 50 years ago that haven't been changed since, you know, they're now allowing care coordination and business models to develop that, you know, we wouldn't have expected potentially maybe ever to change. Like you just said, you know, people with learning disabilities being diagnosed online. Now you can potentially get an ADHD medication online, um, a controlled substance, and, and there's business models behind that where there weren't before. So it, it's really an intriguing time in healthcare. Um, and but I still think that the most under invested and under the radar segment of healthcare is the retail brick and mortar pharmacy space because it has you know throughout the pandemic people have turned to pharmacies consistently for uh, vaccines and we're just we just really are trying to look at that segment of the market and really innovate there and see what else pharmacists can can provide and. Um, and you know, make the public aware of those services. We think that that is a great opportunity there. So, 